Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's me, the Lou D O Double G, and welcome to our first podcast episode of the Angry Belly One Shot. What are we one shotting today, Whoa. Katie? Uh, we just got out of seeing DC's new The Flash, so let's get into it. Louis, what are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I. <laughs> I didn't hate it, honestly. I mean, like, as far as, like, DC films are concerned, it wasn't horrible, right? But it but it wasn't, like, the... Because, like, my favorite DCEU films are Man of Steel and Wonder Woman, right? Easily. And, like... <sighs> yeah, it wasn't good. <laughs> I mean, people were like, oh, yeah, 95%. Of the audience, love it, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, 95% of what? Like, 10 people? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> if, we're, if we're comparing this to Shazam 2, this movie should win a billion Oscars, okay? But if we're comparing this to, like, most other movies, for me, it would land. I didn't hate it. And I didn't love it. But I, I enjoyed chunks of it. So... <sighs> Yeah, I would say I enjoyed chunks of it. To like cap it off before we get too deep into this, I think Ezra Miller is a deeply troubled person and they need a lot of help. Um, They probably need a lot and a lot of help before they continue doing work like this. That's my thoughts on that. And that's all I'm going to go into that. So what would you say if you had to pick out like what are your top three like thoughts and feelings coming away from this movie? Well, my first thought is I need to share this meme I saw with you because we get, just because you were bringing up Ezra. How did they, you see a meme? We've been together the whole time. Well, and I saw a meme yesterday and I meant to send it to you and I forgot to send it to you. But it was like, because, you know, Ezra Miller is non-binary, so their pronouns are they, them. And it was like DC Studios didn't understand the concept of they, them and cast it to Ezra Miller's. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of brutal. Yeah. Anyway. I I do think it's really awesome that they have like that we finally have a non-binary superhero, but I feel like I wish they would have like leaned into that. Cuz it just felt like Ezra Miller a non-binary actor playing a cis character. You know? Sure, sure. So I would have loved to see more of that. I think I also think DC didn't understand that they were, like, (laughs) representation. Also, like, representing, like, low-key a felon. But, you know, anyways. Okay, whatever. But. (laughs) Is kidnapping a a, a felon nowadays? (laughs) Wow. Anyway. Uh, Yeah, no, so I I, I guess, like, my top three points of conversation is, like, first, the CGI. Like, I didn't hate it, right? I, I usually I, I try. Say, yeah. I, I usually try not to let the that sort of thing kind of guide my decisions as far as like whether or not I like a film or whatever. But I feel like in this instance, there were definitely moments that it kind of took me out of it. You know, like I was like, yeah. "Well, this is kind of trash," and like I don't know, like it, more specifically doing the Nick Cage cameo thing. Um, is, yes, is kind of where that was it took very me out. distracting because I was just kind of like, well, I, I I understand the nod, right? Because if you're a huge DC person or even just a huge film person, sometimes, um, anyway, there's they there was a, a Justice League film that they wrote the whole script. They were gonna cast everybody. Um, anyway, one of the people was Nicolas Cage, it was gonna be Superman, and so they had the Nick Cage Superman fighting. I don't even remember what it was, even though it was like 20 minutes ago. Um, and that was just one of the multiverses that they could see inside the time bubble thing they were using. So that was just kind of distracting because it obviously wasn't Nick Cage, but it was a CGI version of him. (laughs) And in that moment I was like, okay. (laughs) I I was wondering if he was in the credits. I didn't look. No, but you know who was though? Um, Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones, Nikolai DeCasterwalder. I might've butchered that name Interesting. But he was actually... I think Barry accidentally took like food from him or something or like hit <laughs> his character. Like he was just, he was in the movie. He made like a brief cameo and they gave yeah. him a special thanks. Aww. Okay. So I'm going to say I, I liked, there's things I liked about the CGI. 
I thought their visualization of like the flashpoint was successful to me and like seeing where they were at that place in time. I thought that was cool. And that made sense to me, especially if I didn't know anything that was going on. I think I followed, I would have followed that well. And especially seeing like what, you know, you can only assume were like the other timelines or planets or whatever colliding. I thought that stuff looked really cool. And I thought the team did a really great job of integrating like, colors and I thought there were so many bright vivid moments in what is usually in a lot of DC universes a very very dark kind of muted world so I thought that was super successful yeah I I I could agree with that I I certainly enjoyed the aspect of like they were obviously doing something that the DCEU hasn't really done that much before um so I do applaud them for that uh but yeah I, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so another thing <laughs> I really... I, another thing I did like about this movie was the use of music, especially in, like, in the first third of the movie when... Wait, are we allowed to do spoilers in this minisode or are we not doing spoilers in this minisode? Let's do a spoiler. Let's try. Okay, Let's great. Let's do it. So... <laughs> just to give you I, i'm assuming they're not going to listen to this unless they want to see the whole thing so i guess like light spoiler warning going forward at, at the end of i mean if you've seen the trailer you know this happens but at the end of the first act they're meeting michael keaton as batman and they have this great little fight scene moment choreographed to 25 or 6 to 4 by chicago and i thought that was super successful and i love scenes like this like at the end of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 where they had just like one of the best fight scenes in Marvel history because it felt like so deeply integrated with the music and I felt like that's something that they did a really great job of using at least in this moment and then one other moment when the two flashes were working together later to integrate music uh, into the fight choreo and I thought that was successful that made me enjoy that moment a lot yeah totally I um I agree with that and I can also say that um it's kind of difficult though like comparing it to like guardians of the galaxy because like i could tell there was a little bit of like influence there right oh yeah because i mean and not because of james gunn in any way but like not directly at least but i feel like space yeah sci-fi ish movies nowadays are are gonna begin to take what he's done with guardians and music and kind of start to integrate in other things but like you know it's still yeah i feel like we're gonna compare because like guardians and like (laughs) once once marvel started like making a strong effort to integrate comedy into their you know into their science fiction that's like that's what i'm always gonna look to is like guardians 2 you know is i'm gonna think you know how do you integrate story and comedy without losing the core of what you're trying to do so, I mean, honestly, if, you know, it is getting compared to that in little moments, that's probably a good sign. Would I say that for the rest of the film? No. So wait, so wait, was the music your second thing then? Yeah, I would say that was my second thing that I, I enjoyed strongly about this movie. Okay, I'll, I'll do my second thing. My second thing okay. is um, there was kind of bits and pieces of it that I thought were funny. Um, I guess uh-huh. Katie was talking about like the comedy of it all there was a decent amount of comedy that i enjoyed um yeah but there were times and and i feel like um our barry uh, like i guess yes, like i know our barry <laughs> if this makes sense the one that we follow from the beginning is like my voice in to how his barry acts or acted in previous films so mm-hmm. like, i kind of found him a little annoying But there were moments where I was like, oh, he's, like, being the voice of the audience who feels like this Barry is annoying, this iteration of him. And he's kind of like, oh, my God, I am annoying. Like, just hearing himself, you know, or whatever. I thought that dynamic was very fun. It it gave a little bit, like, Tom Hardy Venom um, a little bit. Yes. um, Yes, it did. I see where you say that. The kind of, like, back and forth conversations between, like, I'm not annoying as you are, blah, 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 you know, whatever. I am annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that banter is what I'm trying to say. I, I found yeah. quite fun. 
What I hope going forward is presumably us moving on with the Barry from our timeline, our universe, or whatever we're going to call that, is that we find a, a blend because I did find the like second Barry to be like coming on really strong. <laughs> um, and I found the first one to be like muted. And I understand they were trying to convey him like he has a lot of anxiety and he's got a lot of trauma that he's carrying with him. But I hope we can find a blend where that character can move past his trauma and get some help to loosen up and 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 get those elements of, of fun and excitement that do make the flash enjoyable but not like you, you know what i mean i i hope we, we find a blend of these two characters going forward i agree actually and i can't help but feel like i wouldn't like because you you touched on this earlier but the ezra issues i wouldn't even mm-hmm. mind them just switching an actor and saying this is barry allen <laughs> at this point you know what I mean? Like, cause well, that- they could with the way they're handling the whole like flashpoint, but also maybe we're in a different timeline, we're in a different universe? Question mark? Question mark? Kind so of thing. Would, I mean, that's a James Gunn thing, right? But I would also not. And I said this in the vehicle when we were driving back. But like Wally West, man, he he was the longest running Flash. He's the funniest Flash. Mm-hmm. He's I don't know. He's my favorite. So I would love to see a Wally West after this. It seems like a reset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They could. What's your third thing? And I think my my third thing is I think this movie where it falls is, and I know, and I know we talked about this a little bit already. I understand him using time travel is a very different modality of story than we're going straight into the multiverse. But for like, you know, lesser integrated into the DC comics viewers like myself, it feels... Like last week, I just watched an incredible movie where a boy is desperately trying to go back to his own universe to save his father. And this week, I'm trying to watch (laughs) a person trying to go back to save their mother. And one of them did the movie really successfully. And I feel like this one did not as much. And I feel like it's, I'm struggling because I know they're very different things, but it's hard not to compare this to the other multiverse movies we've gotten in the past few years and how strong they are. And this one, I just don't feel like I'm as connected to the story and I'm as connected to the characters and I, and I wish I were, you know? Yeah, I, um, I'm a big DC fanboy. Um, I would say excluding spider-man like dc is my favorite because spider-man and superman will always be head to head in my heart but i said that really weird my heart in my <laughs> heart. they'll always be on the they same will always pedestal be number one in my heart <laughs> and like <laughs> anyway other than that dc is my and, and i've read the flashpoint paradox the comics and i've um dabbled in a lot of things i have an, an original return of superman and an, an original death of superman and like all these things that to say i'm well versed and watching this isn't it wasn't exactly the heartbreak i saw watching batman versus superman because that movie in my eyes is horrific <laughs> and, <laughs> but that is a different that is a different one shot if people want us to watch and talk about it um but again? i've already seen it once why would they make me do it again you're right you're right maybe may, maybe not <laughs> but, that's brutal but <laughs> we'll do it for it, the for the untitled patreon that's always uh, and never happening <laughs> yeah it's never gonna happen but um I, I say that because in my brain, that's like the lowest of the low that you can go to yeah. where like something like the Dark Knight, right? Where, which would be in yeah. the DC world, the highest you can go. I would rate it would in agree. like in like the center. Like it's not as bad sure. as like the Suicide Squad or like the original Suicide Squad. I, David I, I Suicide liked Squad. the su- I was like, I would say a Suicide Squad and then the Suicide Squad would be closer in tier to this. Yeah, yeah, the James Gunn Suicide Squad I actually quite enjoyed. The David Ayer one, however, is like on the bottom of the list with BBS. Yeah, um, I would Poo-poo rate this. Head. Yeah, I would rate this like, <laughs> be- like in between Wonder Woman eighty four and Man of Steel, <laughs> and if Man of Steel is like on the top quarter percentile of the DCE. <laughs> I I would say that's fair. 
Yeah. I, I like I have my own backstory with Wonder Woman 84. Yeah. So I like <laughs> but I did I like this. I liked this. I liked it probably about as much as I liked the Suicide Squad, if not a little oh, less. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um Interesting. but also for me, my gap between mid tier and top tier, there's like no movies in that gap. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, as far mm-hmm. as DC is concerned. For me, it's like the Dark Knight. And then there's like a miles, miles a long gap. And then we get to the mid-tier movies. <laughs> like, for me, <laughs> I, you know? I mean, uh, yeah, it's really hard for us to not talk about The Dark Knight. When any DC movie, yeah. we're comparing any DC yeah. movie. But like, yeah, it was, I mean. It was fun seeing Michael Keaton as Batman. I'll it was, that. actually. That, that. that was that was actually very fun. I, I enjoyed hearing the original themes. Um I, I think the other thing is to for me this is always going to be I'm a little I'm always going to be a little more critical just because I grew up reading these things and and also for those of you who are unaware and I don't know if this is news to you Katie but there is a PG thirteen might even be rated R I'm not sure um, Flashpoint Paradox movie that is wonderful like animated yeah animated and it's it's I haven't seen and, it it's leaps and bounds better than this movie. And that's the other thing too. Well, now it's I like, kind of want to go watch it. That's that's the frustrating part about these things for me because it's like I've seen DC execute wonderful things with their animated movies, and then I come back and watch oh the live action stuff, and it's complete garbage. Excuse me. Don't get up. me started with the Batman animated movies. Oh yeah, leaps man. and bounds, leaps and bounds, and 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 they're so good too. Like anyway, Katie, if you have time this week or. At some point this weekend, I would watch totally sure. watch the Flashpoint Paradox, and maybe we'll come back yeah. and, and talk about us watching the Flashpoint. Because I mean, like, it's just so good. It is so 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 good. And the Reverse yeah. Flash is the villain, and like it. And that's what I was hoping for, right? Like my hope and dream for this movie is that we would see Eobard Thawne, we would see a Reverse Flash, and that sort of thing. You know, because this is a character yeah. that we all know. We've all seen the Flash TV show, or we're all pretty familiar with his mm-hmm. Rogues Gallery, at least to an extent. And my confusion with this is like, why wouldn't you bring another speedster into the fray here, right? Even if it wasn't Reverse Flash, when it was Professor Zoom, or if it was um, Savitar, like we could have gone anywhere with this movie. But instead, we we decided, you know what? Let's do an Ezra Miller Miller double, not even double. Spoiler alert: there's three of them. Um, <coughs> and like, I I don't know. I just I'm gonna just go ahead and say six out of ten. I think we were talking about earlier out of 10. I'm going to say 6 out of 10 for me. I cannot give this a number ranking because I have like a stupid pretentious rating system that doesn't even make any sense. But if I had to give it, I don't know. I'd say it's probably for me like in comparison to what my very, very low expectations were, this would be a 4 out of 10 for me. Holy shit. But I I also want to caveat with (laughs) pretty much like every movie I watch is like a four out of ten in my eyes. So I need it. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll we'll see. My my scale is fucking stupid. We don't even need to get into that. But I I would agree. I would agree. I would say it did not exceed expectations. But, well, no. Sorry. I'll take it back. It exceeded my expectations slightly. So. Okay. So what is our official angry belly watch podcast rating system rating system that's what we're learning can it be like five burgers or something yeah i'd be down or talk about how full the movie makes us sure well how about we do like um how about we do like what is in a burger right so like one bread you know there's like we got the bottom bun and then we get like i don't know the ketchup and, and like the sauces and then we get the lettuce we get the burger, patty, yeah, tomato, another okay. bun, something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll we'll think on it. We'll sleep on it. But I would say this movie did not make me full. I would say <laughs> this movie made me about as full as eating like a bunch of celery with some ranch on it. That, like, it was good and I chewed it and, like, I felt like I didn't need to eat for a little bit. But ultimately, yeah. it did not give me any nutrition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know? I, I, I guess but I like the ranch parts of it. But the ranch was, like, the smallest part If we're, like we're going to go that route, I would probably go ahead and say something along the lines of, like, like a pita bread but without any, like, hummus in it. Like, just, just a stale pita bread. <laughs> like, a singular yeah. pita bread. <laughs> like pita bread is great 
Pita bread is great, but it's a kind of stale and there's no hummus on it. So You can only eat it for so long on its own before it's like boring as fuck. Yeah. Well, and has a dragging second act. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Katie fell asleep <laughs> in the middle of the movie. For, for only snoring. like 10 minutes. But granted, that's like kind of a calling card for me. Yeah, and like, okay, well, that happened when we, the last time that happened was when we saw Venom 2, okay? So, this, yeah. that, so, this is yes, pretty actually, bad. So, yes, that's a great comparison. You know what? The last time I fell asleep at the movies was during Venom 2. So, you know what? Yeah, totally fine with that. Take that as you will, folks. This is our first yeah. Angry <laughs> Belly one shot. Us talking about The Flash. Um, I kind of miss Grant Gustin right now. Okay, everybody, remember to have fun, <laughs> be safe, and to keep those bellies full. Bye-bye. Bye.